Kia ora tato, everyone. It really is an extremely great pleasure to introduce the next two speakers to you because it's one of the things that, um, as a member of the Community Services Committee, we are passionate about your health as well as other people's health. And the Health Quality Safety Commission, uh, Lizzie will tell you a little bit about what they do. They really are behind the scenes organisation, making sure our district health boards and others um, are doing right by us. Uh, Claire has a background in nursing with Mary Potter Hospice and um, she is going to tell you a little bit about that as well as the advanced care plan. And Lizzie is actually on the senior management team uh, with Janice Wilson, Dr. Janice Wilson, one of our members as you know. She apologises. I think she's somewhere in the Middle East, isn't she Lizzie? Yes. So she apologises for not being here. Um, she and Richard are over there at the moment. So otherwise Janice would have introduced uh, Lizzie. Lizzie's had a 25 year um, uh, work history in the health sector and particularly in communications. So she's the person who gets these really important messages out. So please put your hands together and welcome um, Lizzie and Claire to talk about advanced care planning. Kurokoto, nor or Kiwi Aho, core Lizzie Price Aho. Thank you so much for having us in your warm welcome. For a minute there, Jane, I thought you were going to say I was 25. <laughs> Got very excited, but, but no, that wasn't it. So um, I'm Lizzie. I'm um, the director of communications at the Health Quality and Safety Commission. So Janice is my <coughs> boss, and um, I'm on the executive leadership team. Um, with her and she's a fantastic boss, really, really empowering and you know, gives us opportunities like this. Um, so I'm Wellington born and bred, lived here all my life. Um, someone before we were discussing rugby asked me if I followed it. Well, my number plate's H-U-R-I-N um, in yellow and black, so yes I do. Um, and I'll just hand over to Claire to introduce herself and then um, we'll crack into it. Bit shorter. Uh, kia ora everybody, I'm Claire O'Leary. Um, as Jane said, yes, I um, started off nursing and then got involved in health education and documentary filmmaking. So I've worked a lot across different media. Um, I grew up in Orake and I just want to acknowledge Rotary because um, I have a brother with um, cerebral palsy and every Christmas we used to go to the fabulous um, Crippled Children's Society uh, Christmas parties and it was really um, an important part of our family's um, growing up. <clears throat> so I know that you support that charity and in fact started it. So yeah, it's pretty amazing to be part of that um, culture. So it's great to be here today. So the um, Health Quality and Safety Commission, um, you may not have heard of it. Uh, we stint was started eight years ago and really we're about improving patient safety, not just in hospitals but in primary care as well. So and it's a little bit sort of esoteric what we do. Um, you know, it's people sort of understand what happens in hospitals or at the GP's office, but we sort of I guess support um, people in, in all those settings, health professionals, to deliver the, the safest care possible. And a, a very simple example would be um, there was a, a stroke, a ward up in, I think it was Auckland DHB, the stroke ward where they were having a lot of people um, falling off the toilet and breaking hips and, and arms and legs. Um, and they, so they did a quality improvement study just to find out why that was. And what they found out was that the toilet paper was only on one side of the wall. And of course, if you've had a stroke, often you can't use one side of your body as, as well as the other. So they put toilet paper on both sides and the problem went away. So that's a really, really simple example of you know, doing a quality, <coughs> taking a quality improvement approach um, and, and actually making a real difference. So advanced care planning, um, we're really, really excited about, about this project. We launched a, a big campaign about it. Well, when I say big campaign, we don't have huge budget, but the Minister of Health launched it on the 19th of February. Um, so it's really about thinking about what you would like, not just in your last 
year of life, although, you know, realistically that is when your advanced care plan will kick in. But before you get ill, so that you know, for example, who who would you like with you at the end? Where would you like to be? You know, you can't always have that choice, but sometimes you can. What treatments would you like and wouldn't you like? Um, do you want to be resuscitated? All that sort of thing. So it's about what matters to you and, and to your family. Oh, we just, I've just, I'm very good at talking ahead of my slides. Um, so this is the campaign that, that we have launched recently and we worked really closely with a number of communities, particularly Māori Pacific and Asian, and Claire was our absolute star in that and managed to find um, many of the people that are actually featured in the campaign. So this is um, Pussy Irali and her daughter and she's um, an artist in Auckland. And I hope some of you might, might have seen the um, campaign ads that we have, but we just took <coughs> lots of different points of view from some people who were um, quite sick, um, and in fact in palliative care, to others who, who weren't sick at all, but who were planning for the future. This is Arthur, who's from South Auckland, and he's one of our champions. He actually gets himself down to his GP's office and sits there all day and talks to people about doing an advanced care plan. So he's definitely one of our stars. So can you hear me now at the back? Is that better? Okay. Um, one of the important things, um, just going back to the slide before, was to make these available in as many languages as possible. So we just took the top five um, of the demograph across New Zealand um, to make them available in English, Te Reo Māori, which we have a, a commitment to from the Treaty of Waitangi, Samoan, Tongan, and both forms of Chinese, both simplified and traditional. Because <clears throat> you'll find with the Chinese community, there are many people who are not um, literate, but they, they are, it's an oral culture, especially the women. And if you want to get information to them, you have to do it in their own language. So the first step really, if you think about it from your own perspective and your family, the different generations of your family who are dealing with health issues, um, just thinking about what does the future for that person look like? what's important to them, and how do you know what's important to them? Have you asked them? And as um, Lizzie was talking about the commission, one of our commitments is to really uncover the views of consumers in the health system and to find out what the experience of using the health system is about. So in our committees, um, looking at issues, we have clinical leaders, but we also have consumers who are using whatever aspect of the health system it is, whether it's mental health and addiction, whether it's um, maternal health or uh, the age residential care, which is a new unit that we've just set up recently. Are there treatments that you want or actually do you realise that you can say, no, I don't want that treatment? You have um, a, a kind of agency in deciding what you don't want as much as what you do want. and do you know that you can voice that with your doctors and health professionals? And if you can't make decisions anymore, who would you want to make decisions for you? And have you written that down somewhere? So we all look after our property interests and who's gonna look after that, but what about our health and well-being in the future? As Pussy says, we always talked about what to expect, everybody dies. We may not want to think about it, but it is a fact. The next step is to talk about it. So who have you talked about these important matters with? Your family, your friends, your peers, your doctor, your spiritual advisor. Some of these things are not easy to talk about and you may find that as you go through the advanced care plan, you're confronted with things you may not have thought about for a long time. And that can be quite confronting or disturbing. It can sometimes bring up things from the past or bring up fears about the future for you and your family. <coughs> but one of our, um, one of the, we have a, a whole committee um, working with us on this and um, one of the Māori advisors said to us, well actually, I think the best way to think about this is that it's a gift to your family or whānau 
that it's actually, if you have thought about these things, you're preparing the way for them, um, whether it's as part of an acute illness or an actual death and bereavement process. If you think about it and prepare for it, when it actually happens, it may still be unexpected, but there are things in place for people to be able to work through things. And then write it down. So there is a plan and there's some outside for you to take home with you. Um, there's a little brochure as well that tells you a bit more about it before you actually look at, at writing things down. But it's important to document what your wishes are and then to share that with your GP or your specialist if you have one. And then it can be shared with health professionals so that if there's an acute situation, they know that you have an advanced care plan and they will adhere to your wishes. Sorry. Oh, is that the video? So we're just going to show you a couple of um, stories from the campaign. There were six stories that we used. Um, and as Lizzie said, a diverse collection of um, Māori, Pacific, Asian, Pākehā voices and gay. So um, our commitment was to, to bridge the community as, as broadly as we could um, and to get the stories from the people who are thinking about this um, issue and who have thought about it. Good to go. And then the other aspect is to share it, as I said, with your GP or your health professional. But most of all, your loved ones first. Think about it yourself. Talk to your family and your friends and your peers. Talk amongst each other and, um, and then link it to your enduring power of attorney and your wills. And it's, it's a living document, so you can review it. If something changes, have another look at your advanced care plan and see if it's still relevant. Shall I go back? There was a series of tests they needed to do. And then there was a choice about whether they continued to go on testing with lumbar punctures and other procedures. And I decided at that point, I didn't want any more of these other procedures. It made me start to think about at what point do I want intervention? And so we, I've done an advanced care plan. But also the family will have that, so that they'll know when they're confronted with making hard decisions, what my thoughts are on them. So Cheryl has Parkinson's and so part of her plan was looking at what will happen in the future and to be prepared for that. She also uh, co-facilitates a, um, a tango, t therapeutic tango class um, for people with neurodegenerative disorders. So um, she finds that very therapeutic for herself to still have that active engagement. Um, despite having a long-term diagnosis. So mm -hmm. I think that's you know, a really important aspect of that too, is to stay engaged and stay social. Um, and this video uh, was um, done up in Tapuya Springs, up in Tairawhiti, north of Gisborne. Um, it was done in an iwi-run health facility um, called Tapuya Springs. and. Um, it features Kiri Carr, who was a very active uh, proponent of Te Reo Māori in Wellington for many years. And she was also uh, a very strong advocate for the arts and Māori culture, in particular theatre. Um, some of you may recognise her from being around Wellington. When people die, a lot of them are frightened, as I am, because you don't know where to go. All you know is this mythical place called Hawaii. So I moved to Tepoya Hospital because my family and I was being here, had been well treated. 
Take that out for us. All right. I can visit some lost people. This is a lovely spot to be. Since I got sick, I started searching for home. My particular is a little place on a river. Had one for years, so I was down from the ground. We had 13 children in the family, and we all grew up speaking Maori. And if you wanted to go anywhere, there was no car, no bicycle, you'd call a horse. We realized that going to boarding school was an escape, and those were our learning centers of how to have learning. And it was hard going, but we survived. And I won an AFS scholarship, which took me to high school in Oregon. And that's where I got a feeling about it being worthwhile fighting for things that keep people upright. Katie had most of her life in Wellington, initially as a teacher, but then uh, as a lecturer at Teachers College and she was involved in the arts and drama um, and writing and in film. So she, she was definitely high profile and seen as a very um, progressive woman and very important in terms of the Māori scene in, in Wellington. Once she left to go teaching, she didn't return to Wellington for that until she retired in her late 50s. I knew I wasn't very well. My father was cancer, because I was busy diagnosing myself, as a lot of our people do. They said to me, they had a go to the to go to the doctor. They don't tell me directly what disease I had or their thoughts I had. They told a little group of the family who I was brushed off when they had a hui without me. Living in Mani Trakia, and because of a number of health issues, became unworkable. <coughs> and she was moved into the hospice here at Blair Springs for what we were told was palliative care. Being home and being cared for by home people. I never thought it would be important by the rest. I worried about who's going to look after them all fully and what will the world be like for them. Being remembered and hoping what you stood for was going to give the next generation a focus so they keep you know, the circle going. Don't cry for me, get focused on the future. Everybody has to go sometime. It's something that I think every Māori faces up to. And all you have to make sure is that your canoe is ready and that you've got your paddle on board. Because you've got to have an ending to the story. So one of the reasons um, that we came to talk to you today is to share that message and to, I suppose, challenge you all to think about that in your own families and for yourselves. <clears throat> and also, how can we work with you in the future to share some of the stories that I know are amongst you all, um, to be able to tell different um, stories along the way about what thinking about the future really means to you and how we can share this message um, throughout the community. <clears throat> and all the videos from the campaign are, are available for viewing on the website, myacp.org. So if you didn't catch all of the sound, um, some of you at the back, I know it was probably a little bit tough, um, you can watch them again online. And we also have all the resources in English and Te Reo, Māori, Samoan, Tongan and Chinese that you can share amongst the different communities that you work with. Um, and any ideas that you may have too about um, where to share the story would be most warmly welcomed. So I'm just going to finish um, today with a little waiata and if you know it, please join in. <clears throat> 
Actually, medicinal cannabis is still is actually available in the hospice um, world um, at the moment. So, if you are concerned about that, um, <clears throat> and so that is being um, negotiated at the moment, in terms of um, the euthanasia um, or end of life issues bill, which is currently before Parliament, um, we operate in a in the legislation that is um, legal now. Um, but if in the future that legislation did change, then that would be part of the discussion and the all um, between you and your family and your health professionals. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> Is the material available online to actually fill out an electronic form? Yes, you can fill out an electronic version. You just need to download the form <laughs> first, and um, I, I will send um, all the... Well, you've got the PowerPoint, but we can also just send the, um, the links to you because the videos will be too big to share. But you could send the PowerPoint without the videos and just the link to the online ones. So you can have a look at it online, um, share it amongst your peers, and also um, talk about it amongst yourselves because I think it does stir up quite a lot of um, issues for people and, and communities. So be very, very interested in your feedback too as you, you start to navigate this territory. Because as you know, there's an ageing demograph um, and there are challenges in the health system um, and we want to be able to meet the needs of, of a diverse um, collection of people. When you look at Keri's situation up in a rural, poor community up on the East Cape, it's a very different scenario to um, having access to city hospitals and aged care facilities. And so um, there's quite a bit of inequity across the health system with the ageing population, and that's, that's another aspect to think about in terms of the future. Well, you <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can still use your organs once you've lost your marbles. Um, seriously, though, um, if you have written it in your advance care plan, um, that is um, taken seriously by the health professionals. So, um, add in your advance directive. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, if you have an advance, like yep, no, no, that's another aspect of it. Oh. No, Do you no, want to say something about that? that? No, yeah. hard, hard to well, that, that's another aspect of why writing it down is very important because it is your voice um, and it's your future, what happens with you and your care in the future. Any other questions? Okay, Jane, I'll ask you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.
I want to say thank you very much to um, Lizzie and Claire because this is just literally the, uh, the, the surface, you know, I mean we're all you know, getting older and I wanted to tell you just a very quick story. A few years ago I got breast cancer and I invoked my key person insurance as one does. And I didn't know until I got a phone call um, to say, well, actually, your breast cancer is very serious. We're paying out your life insurance. And I went, oh, I said a few words, you know, as you do. We don't swear around here. I said a few words and thought, oh, my God, that's really serious. And I had already done my will, my power of attorney, um, and I had two people for power of attorney in case the first one died. That does happen. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I realized that I didn't actually have those wishes. Mm -hmm. And so it was only a, a year or so after that that this, came, this um, advanced care plan came into being. And at Christmas, um, some of you know I break my legs a lot, so at Christmas <laughs> I was lying with my leg up, you know, having lots of Christmas goodies. And my daughter said, what's this thing? And she held up this handwritten document I had on the dining room table. And I started telling her the story of my advanced care plans. And she didn't know that I liked cats and because I'm not allowed to have one because I'd fall over it and so I said I wanted a kitten on my on my knee as I die and things like that but I told her about what I wanted literally what I wanted spiritually mentally emotionally who I wanted around me and I didn't know when I originally had my breast cancer treatment that I could have refused some of the more invasive and really awful treatments that I got I mean I'm not saying they didn't cure me they did but you know there's some pretty awful stuff so my daughter said to me, they said, she just said, Mum, I didn't know you wanted any of this. And yet I had thought I had communicated with my daughter over many, many years and my husband. But when I was telling the stories around the dining room table over Christmas, they said, we didn't know this, Jane. And so now, thanks to you, and I thank you, Claire, because it was Claire who gave me my, um, my advanced care plan copy. It is on a PDF uh, typable. You can type it. You can also then send that by email onto Manage My Health and onto your GP or your nurse, because I have done that as well. And um, thank you very much. And that was absolutely inspiring. We are all going to go there one day. And the videos were fabulous. The work of the Health uh, Quality Safety Commission is often unsung and I have to say unappreciated. And I'd like you to stand now, please, and give these guys a really good standing ovation because we don't get many of them. So come on. Anna Claire, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I hope you'll join us again at Rotary. Thank you. thank you so much.